Welcome to Discover the Santinez Valley. I'm Shelby Sim and today we'll be visiting amazing locations, tasting great food, and even learning how grapes get turned into some world-class wine. Let's get started. This week, our journey begins in Buellton at the Pea Soup Anderson's Inn. Located next to the world-famous restaurant, this property is the perfect place for a family to stay during their visit to the Santinez Valley. Let's meet the owner, Linda, whose family has an incredible history in this area. Thank you for having us. Please tell us a little bit about the property. Welcome, and I'm so glad you're here to be with us today, Shelby. This is a continuation of the legacy that my dad has left for our family. Uh, this was built in three different stages. Beautiful property. We have a lot of amenities uh, for our guests, and we have a lot of repeat guests that come uh, to explore this area, the Sandness Valley. Uh, fantastic. Uh, how many rooms? We have 97 rooms, uh, all equipped with uh, microwaves and refrigerators and very self-contained. We have a barbecue pit on the property, uh, all the amenities to play. We have bocce ball, putting green, uh, we have um, cornhole, uh, the pool and the jacuzzi, so lots of activities for people to enjoy. It's a beautiful property. Um, what makes Pea Soup Anderson's Inn unique amongst the other properties in the Santinez Valley? I think the history, the history of my family, uh, the family legacy, uh, and that we all work here. We take great pride in our um, hotel that we offer to our guests, and we want to make sure that their uh, stay is pleasant and enjoyable, and that they feel relaxed and at home. Fantastic. Well, this, I believe this is a, a Chardonnay, a local Chardonnay? Dragonette Chardonnay, just down the street. Well, it's delicious and uh, world-class as all Santinez Valley wine is. Uh, I understand you have a, a shuttle that, that does wine tours here in the property? Yes, we have a shuttle that uh, can accommodate nine people and we uh, will take them to the different wineries or if we have wedding guests here, we shuttle them back and forth to the wedding. Uh, we shuttle them back and forth to town or restaurants. Um, so it's available to our guests, yes. What a great convenience, yes. that's fantastic. Um, how can folks find Pea Soup Anderson's Inn? They can find Pea Soup Anderson Inn on the web page, of course, and it's just right off 101, right by the legendary Pea Soup Anderson Inn restaurant as well. Fantastic. How long has Pea Soup Anderson, the restaurant, been around? Since before I was born, 1924. 1924. 1924. That was, uh, again, one of the uh, original uh, founders in the valley, the Anderson family, Nielsen family, Rasmussen family. Those are all families that are legendary in this community. And uh, those who travel up and down California on Highway 101 have seen the billboards for all of our lives. And uh, it's what Buellton was known for many, many years. And there's just so much to enjoy now in Buellton besides the, the Pea Soup Andersons with the wine, with the food, with the different experiences. Right, and we also have all the events. We have the chili event, That's we have the right. brew fest event. Uh, we also have the uh, breweries, the craft breweries that are here. So uh, there's a lot in fabulous restaurants the sideways famous restaurants as well. So I know that the property and that it, this is very family friendly. Uh, what, what can folks expect to, to come and do when they stay at the Pea Soup Anderson's Inn? Well, they can do whatever they'd like. They could actually stay here and, and not go anywhere. If they want to park their car and stay here, they're certainly welcome to do that. We have all the amenities for that barbecue pits uh, with all the toys out here for the kids. Um, but you're literally five minutes from everything in this valley. So it is the gateway to the 
Santa Inez Valley, to Solvang, uh, if you're bringing families to Sunnyfields Park, uh, there's golfing, there's hiking, there's boating on Lake Kachuma. So you really have everything at your disposal. It's just a matter of how active you want to be. And uh, I noticed some pastries close by. Yes, we have fresh pastries delivered every morning from Olson's Bakery, uh, which is again one of the world-renowned bakeries in uh, Solvang, California. Wow. And it's so peaceful here. Uh, one of the things people always tell me, or visitors and residents alike, is when they come over the pass or they come up 101 and they get to the valley, it's just a big, deep breath of fresh air. And that's the, how you feel here at Peace Soup Anderson's Inn. And yet you're just a mile from the 101. You're a mile from the 101 and you are literally uh, two miles from Solvang and everything else that uh, you would want to experience in the San Inez Valley. Linda, again, thank you so much for having us out today. And uh, why don't we hop on that shuttle and, and uh, go on another adventure? That's a great idea. Cheers. Cheers. Now that I'm checked in at Pea Soup Anderson's Inn, I'm going to hop on the shuttle to Solomon and check out an activity that's really become popular in recent years, escape rooms. And this one in Solvang just happens to be the ultimate escape room. This is gonna be fun. Annette, thank you so much for having us out to the Ultimate Escape Rooms. Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate you being here today. Tell us about uh, the concept and how this all began for you. Well, the, it began at the beginning of 2016. I went on a vacation with some girlfriends to Vegas, and one of the ladies had just heard about escape rooms and suggested we do one, and I thought, what the heck would I want to do that for? Get locked in a room? No. Right. But she convinced us yeah. and we went and the four of us had so much fun. We came out of there giggling and laughing and high-fiving each other. And we got in the car and said, wow, this would be fun to run one. And take us through the concept for those that aren't uh, familiar with an escape room. Well, an escape room is an adult amusement activity where you and other participants are in a room together and you have 60 minutes to find clues, solve puzzles, and escape. Oh, all right. Which means finding the four digit code that opens and unlocks the door. And gets you out of there. Right. Oh. And it's not really locked, you're not really locked in. There's a second door that's available for free egress at any time. It's for fun. And, it's for fun. Uh, it's safe. And, and it's yeah. an immersion type experience. Sure. Wow. Uh, a lot of problem solving, I had, right? And, and team building and, team and building. working with your group. And it's a solid hour of time with your family or friends or loved ones with no cell phones, no screens in front of you. You have to actually communicate with each other. I found this to put together all of the solutions. Terrific, how long yeah. have you been here in the Santinez Valley? We opened here in August a year ago. Okay. And we're looking forward to uh, opening our third room this you next. You have two currently? We have two. Yeah? Yes. And uh, describe the rooms. The first room we opened was called the Mischievous Nisa. And it's a Christmas themed room in uh, Denmark, apparently they have, each family has something called a Nisa. And it's kind of like an elf here. And this family's Nisa is angry with them because they decided to not do Christmas. And he has locked the family in their farmhouse and will not release them until they have accomplished decorating it properly for Christmas. Let's go check out the room. Okay, oh, that sounds fun. Thank you, Annette. Mm -hmm. So here we are in one of the escape rooms. Annette, where are we? This is the mischievous Nisa. And this is your Danish farmhouse. And you're stuck here. So I, and we have one hour. 60, up to 60 minutes. Up to 60 yes. minutes. Yes, and uh, so you start, where would you look? I don't know. So you just look around and you just kind of figure things out as yes. you go? Yes. And what if you need help? Well. When you get your first 10 minute warning. Welcome in family. Tis I, your niece. 10 minutes have passed and 50 remain. You are just starting my holiday game. <laughs> if you haven't made any progress at that point, I suggest you all raise your hands and you will get a clue. Get a clue to get you going. Yeah, let's have our first clue. Really family, is it a nice Yule celebration without a roaring fire? 
So roaring fire. So that would make me look around for wood. Yeah, fireplace see here. See some wood, mm. and then we would do the fireplace. And that's that's now it. Get us going. And that then we just make sure the game moves along, and everybody has a great time. Awesome. Let's go check out the other room. Okay. Here we are in the second room. Uh, Annette, please tell us, where are we? What do we have to do here? We are in Jed, the gold miner's cabin. And Jed disappeared after he struck it big. And so we are in here looking for what happened to him. We're trying to discover what happened to him before the rattlesnake kid comes because he wants to steal the fortune that Jed came across while he was gold, gold mining. So we're we looking for gold or we're we looking to get out? We're looking to get out before get the out. rattlesnake kid comes for the gold. Got it. Hopefully with the gold. All right. Yeah. So again, uh, do we need to start with a clue or we've been here for a bit and, and uh, we need some help? Ooh, I'm the ghost of Jed Ironwood and I'm here to haunt you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, sir, my name's Jed and I'm dead. I just want you to all know that my spirit has moved on and y'all need to find my goal. And it's been 10 minutes in my room and I reckon you got 50 minutes more before that rattlesnake kid arrives. Y'all need a hint, don't you? Yes, please. Yes. All right. Have y'all found my lucky bandana? Not Danny? yet. Well, you all should find it, don't you think? Absolutely. What are we going to do with it? Well, if you look closely, you'll see a handprint on it. That ain't the only place my hand left a mark. If you look around the room, maybe you could find its pair. Oh, got okay. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Annette, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for including us. We're yeah. very honored. I oh, appreciate it. This is all part of discovering the Santinas Valley. Please tell us how we can find the ultimate escape rooms. Our website is www.theultimateescaperooms.com. Fantastic. And everything you need to find out about us and book to play is on the website, as well as all of our social media links. Great. And so you are on Instagram and Facebook yes. and, and that kind of thing. Twitter, but, all yeah. of the above. But go to the website and get yes. all that info. Yes. And then we'll see you here at the Ultimate Escape Rooms in Solving in the Santinas Valley. You can really work up an appetite solving all those puzzles. Luckily, just across the street from the Ultimate Escape Room and right in the heart of the Danish village of Solving is a delightful throwback to the classic diners of yesteryear. Let's head into Chomp and talk with owner Aaron Peterson. Aaron, thank you so much for having us at the Chomp. Absolutely, happy Fantastic. to have you. Fantastic. Uh, tell us about the property. The how did it begin? How long has it been around? And well, we we opened I, coming up here in nine years this spring. Nine um, years. Yeah, I've got other restaurant in town, and this became available in a building that we own, and figured let's do a burger, fries, and shakes place. Make it easy. Yep. Tell us about your customer. Tell us about your employees and uh, the, the, the atmosphere of CHOMP. So, so the, the concept was a place where families can come, very kid-friendly, dog-friendly, family-friendly. Along with that concept, I employ lots of high school and college kids. I think I've got about 40, 42 high school and college kids at this location alone. Wow. They work part-time, brings their friends in, brings their families in, and we try to make it fun here. Um, when we opened, we got voted best new restaurant, and ever since, for eight years in a row, we've gotten best family restaurant in the Valley. And so I think our concept has worked to bring families in and kids in and, and um, have a good time. That's great. It is a great spot. I've come in with my family several times. Um, this all looks amazing. Could you let us know what we have on the table here? Yeah, so some of it is our basic cheeseburger hamburgers, um, but we've tried to do as other restaurants have done with burgers. We have an egg ranchero burger. We have a, a Hawaiian style burger. We have lots of salads on our menu also. Uh, chicken Asian salad from Cobb salad to Caesar salads. And then we have our, our Asian pork burger, which is uh, pork meat with coleslaw and sriracha and teriyaki sauce. Uh, we kind of change the menu up. We bring different concepts in, different items in. Mm. Excuse me, great, great onion rings as well. We also, because, because we don't want to just do burgers, we do a fish tacos, fish and chips, and we do our traditional things like Rubens and hot pastrami's and lots of salads for the, for the moms and those that don't want to have burgers. And we have some milkshakes. So the milkshakes are standard. We do a vanilla, a chocolate, and we do an Oreo mixed together. Um, they're handmade and they really fluff up really well. You usually get the extra on the side. 
Um, then we do lots of beer and wine. Um, mm. All local beer, uh, M Special, Fig, and Firestone. We got different types of local ones. We rotate the wine through. We always have three reds, three whites, a Sauv Blanc, a Chardonnay, a blend. We'll do a cab from Firestone. Press Gang, we bring in their blend also. So we, Lincourt Chardonnay, it's all really good local fun wine at a reasonable price. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, the the Santa Inez Valley is a wonderful place for, for local wines, for local beers, and uh, the, the food looks great. Uh, let's dig in. Yeah, absolutely. This is amazing. Aaron, again, thank you for having us. Um, this is also an affordable place for families. That's what we tried to do. Tried to keep it cheap and affordable, absolutely. Uh, most of the dishes are $12 or less, and the beer and wine around $8. Or Six, seven, and eight bucks for beer, yeah. wine, or a milkshake. That's terrific, and I understand that the, the milkshakes are even more popular than the, the beer and the wine. We sell as many milkshakes as beer and wine combined, yes. Ah. That's the hot item. And uh, you have a few other uh, enterprises in town. Yeah, about a, about a year ago, in, in the same building that we own here, I opened uh, the coffee house by Chomp. Um, and it opens at 6.30 in the morning, and it does the full range of coffees and pastry. We bake some in-house, we bake some here, and we get a lot from Baker's Table out in San Ynez. That's great. Uh, before we started our filming today, in fact, uh, we went and got a coffee from your mm. coffee there shop. There you go. Delicious. And then this last summer, a uh, location came available down the street, and in June we opened Brekkies by Chomp. Brekkies is a breakfast concept. People had asked me to do breakfast here at Chomp, and why didn't I? And th those are long days to have it at one location. So the, the, uh, that location became available. We remodeled real quick and opened up Brekkies, which is a 7 to 2.30 breakfast brunch all day place. How fun. Oh, we'll have to maybe get that in the next season. Yeah, that's a good one too. It's all a lot right. of fun. How do we find out more about Chomp and everything you have going on in Solvang in the Santinas Valley? You know, in all the places, the, the coffeehousebychomp.com or brekkiesbychomp.com or just the original Chomp. Dot com is going to pop up as long as you put in solving. They, they always come up. And uh, you're on Instagram, Facebook. Kind of we are. We're on Instagram and Facebook. I'm a little old to handle those things. I still use a flip phone, so I'm not real good with social media, but my, my kids at work for me do. And now between all three of them, I think I have about 85 high school and college kids working for me. Um, and we rotate the kids from the coffee shop over to Brecky's and sometimes back to Chomp. That's fantastic. Anything else you'd like to share with us? Just come on in and, and see us. A um, lot of restaurants are going to the kiosks or the number system or the buzzers, and we still want to do service, full service at the, at the table for folks. It's employing a lot of high school kids, like I say, young kids, and uh, we work around their school schedules and, and um, try to have a good time with them, and most of them, it's their first job, All so right. it works out well. Cheers, Aaron. Thanks for coming in. A pleasure. Thank you for having us. I love finishing a great day in the Santinez Valley with a wine tasting, and I'm really looking forward to checking out Lucas and the Wellens tasting room here in Solvang. But before we head there, Louis Lucas has invited me to visit his beautiful vineyard and learn about the winemaking process. Louis, thank you so much for having us out. It's a beautiful spot. Tell us how long you've been here. What started it all? Well, this particular spot we bought 22 years ago, and it was vineyard at the time. Okay. But we've made some, you know, a few improvements and changed the varieties around and, and uh, discovered that this is a little bit of Bordeaux and California right here. Ah, right on. And uh, I understand this is actually your 50th year with uh, working with wine. Well, it's my 50th year that I've been in Santa Barbara County. I came to Santa Barbara County in 1970, planted, well, I actually planted my first vine in May of 1970. And believe it or not, 50 years have gone by. My goodness, yeah. You know. Tell us about Lucas and Llewellyn and how it all started. Well, it took a good friend, Judge Llewellyn, who joined me in business uh, 22 years ago. And prior to that, I had been in the area and 
Royce, of course, was uh, became a retired judge. Along the way, uh, the opportunity came. Uh, uh, Royce was interested, and, and we formed Lucas and Llewellyn in uh, 1996. 1996. 1996. And just for, again, for the folks at home, uh, it is February. Uh, that's why you're seeing the, the vines in a dormant state. What comes next after this? Uh... Well, they've been pruned. They need to be tied. Yeah. Uh, we pruned uh, up on the hills. We pruned a little early because it doesn't get as cold in the spring. So these have been pruned. And you'll see these things sticking up behind you are canes. This is a cane pruned vineyard, two canes per vine with about four or five spurs. Each one has a couple buds. And this is Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. Uh, interesting Cabernet Franc. It just got a double gold at the uh, Chronicle Tasting in San Francisco from this vineyard. Oh, congratulations. So, hey. <laughs> that is really cool. How much total acreage do you have overall under Lucas and Llewellyn? Approximately 400 acres. 400 acres. Well, I'm looking forward to trying some of your wines. Why don't we head over to the tasting room and try them out? I'm always ready for that. All right. <laughs> We're now in your tasting room, a beautiful space. Uh, how long has the tasting room been here? 18 or 19 years. 18 or 19 years. You've seen a lot of changes, right? And the Lucas and Llewellyn's tasting room is right in the middle of Solvang. As, as we all know from watching the series now, it's in the heart of the Santinez Valley, Danish capital of America. Uh, what kind of customers do you see in here, Louis? <laughs> from all over the world. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's the unexpected. And uh, the other thing that you see is a lot of nice people. And I think that goes with wine. Little culture, little history, enjoyment, friendship, all the good things. Well, what are we gonna start off with here? All right, well, this is a reason to celebrate. Absolutely, this what is, isn't? <laughs> we are supposed to call it sparkling wine, but it's champagne, or we can call it champagne style. Uh, but no, this is our sparkling wine. And it's, uh, this one is, uh, this particular one is 50% uh, Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir. Picked on the same day and we co-ferment. We put the juices together, ferment them together, and then we take them through the champagne process. We don't release it until it's at least two years old. You know, we let, let it lay there in, in tirage. And we, and we make some specialty uh, champagnes. I make one with a splash of cognac and we let it sit for four years before we do that. So, hmm. what do fun. we have next? Next, Pinot Noir. Of course, Pinot Noir, since the movie, sideways, <laughs> is uh, the big thing in Santa Barbara County. Right. And uh, we have three of the best growing areas for Pinot uh, uh, Los, uh, Los Alamos and Santa Maria and uh, Santa Rita Hills. I mean, three, three great places to grow Pinot in the county. And, and of course, Pinot has become a, a mainstay in the business. Acreage has doubled and, and uh, it's mm. one of the favorites. It smells good. Our high, our high nine Pinot, we call it high nine because we have the nine acres up on top of this hill. It had never been planted in anything before. And uh, I mentioned to Royce about 20 years ago, you know, I'd like to plant that hill, Royce. And he said, why don't you? And so I planted it. And uh, it ended up being, it produces our best Pinot. And then this is the uh, Cab Franc where we right. were earlier This is today. what we talked about, yeah. the double gold at the Chronicle Tasting. Oh. And this is Cabernet Franc, 100%. Uh, it has a dryness to it that, um, uh, wh whether it be uh, dried herb, to me it's organic. And the, the other thing uh, with Cabernet Franc is, you know, it's one of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon, hmm. which... Uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean parents? Cabernet Franc was an existing variety, and we sort of, they sort of mated with Sauvignon Blanc, a white wine, and the offspring was Cabernet Sauvignon, one of the great varieties ever. Ah. So uh, it's interesting that it uh, played that role. Yeah. Cabernet Franc did. But as a little, this unique character, I keep wanting to talk about this unique character that it has. And it, it doesn't pass that character 
it does in, in, a, in a different way. It passes it to Cabernet Sauvignon. But um, as a result, it's become uh, now a, pop, a more, more popular variety. Absolutely. And, and it, uh, yeah. And uh, it does really well. And of course, this is in my yard. Those are the most pampered grapes we have. <laughs> you know, I, uh, they uh, can't ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> you see what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a, a, just a beautiful smoky spice to it. Spicy? It? Yeah. A clean finish. Okay. And then? And then, last but not least, is Cote del Sol. This was a, a wine that uh, I got the idea on a trip to Australia. I was at, I don't know why I mentioned Penfolds, but I will. And uh, they, they, they poured me a Cabernet with a little bit of Syrah in it. So I made a little mental note. And, and I said, someday maybe I ought to do that. So when I got back, this is like 12 or 15 years ago, I uh, made a 8% uh, Syrah, 92% Cabernet. And, but what I did that was different is I picked it on the same day and fermented it together. I love co-fermentation because you get something that you can't blend to. Mm. So if it's really good, it's unique. If it's bad, you try again. <laughs> but this one really worked. And so uh, it got the name Cote del Sol because I had another idea. We were harvesting the grapes and I have it on this, uh, it's not an arbor, but it's a cross arm. And I take the, can uh, the vine up and I split the canopy. So on this vine, I only pick the sun side of the vine. Mm. Why? Because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> but no, really, it, uh, uh, Dan Gears, our winemaker here at that time, he and I were playing with a Cabernet and we're looking at it. And what was interesting was that the sun side was different than the, the morning sun side. And so ever since that time, I still pick the sides separately. Um, if you give the other side uh, another 10 or 12 days, it makes a unique, terrific wine. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's what we learned along, along the way. And it's been one of the favorite wines that we do. Thank you again for sharing everything with us today. It has a richness to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Just yeah. well, it's good. Anyway. Like a steak unto itself. Louis, how can folks find out more about Lucas and the Wellen? Well, besides coming to Solvang, yes. we have a website, llwine.com, kind of simple. And uh, of course, uh, we hope to be in stores and restaurants and that kind of things. We are working on that more and more. What we do is personal. Yeah. All these wines and the vines, you saw the vines. Absolutely. You know, we're, uh, it's us. It's an example of us. Yeah. Well, cheers. And, uh, cheers. Thank you again. Lucas and the Wellen. It's been a wow day in the Santinez Valley. I'm looking forward to going into the Pea Soup Anderson Inn and taking a nap. Maybe come on out and play some cornhole. See you next week.